Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. So everyone has a guitar that's very special to them. And this is a guitar that's very special to me. This is my 2010 ESP Standard Eclipse 2 USA from before they were rebranded to E2. It's not an ESP USA, that it is an entirely separate brand. This Eclipse is made in Japan. It's got a thinner body, a sharper cutaway horn, and a different enough control layout compared to a Les Paul that it was safe for the US market, if you know what I mean. I got it new in 2010 when I first moved back to the States and I love this guitar. It was my main guitar for so long. It was the last one that I've gigged out with actually. And the Eclipse was my first high-end guitar and the guitar that got me back into playing seriously. Prior to this, I could not understand why anyone would pay that much for a guitar. Like how much better would it actually be compared to my awesome Epiphone G400 Custom? And as soon as I picked it up, my entire world changed. It was like, oh, so this is what a premium guitar is like. This is insane. And so I've played the absolute shit out of it. A billion palm mutes later, the gold is starting to wear off the bridge. It's got a bunch of random dings and scratches on the back, especially. The only thing I've done is replace the stock EMGs with Fish Influence Modern, so it's got the multiple voices. And personally, I dig the whole sleeper modern metal guitar masquerading as a classic vibe. But the real way you can tell it's been through some ish is I've worn string dents into the frets. And these are Jeskar, these are no soft frets. If you went to go bend a string, you were literally hitting a pothole. So when Sweetwater asked last month if I wanted to send a guitar over for Gearfest, get it plecked, and kind of see what that whole thing was about, this is the first guitar that came to mind. Even with the frets dented, it was still one of my best playing guitars. It's so unbelievably stable and rock solid. And I was hyped at the prospect of getting one of my favorite guitars of all time back to its peak playing condition. So I said my goodbyes, boxed it up, and sent it out to Sweetwater. If you don't really know what plucking is, that's totally okay. At the time, I wasn't so sure on the details either. But so basically, when I got to Fort Wayne, they showed me their plucking area. And the idea behind plucking is that every guitar is different. Every guitar is unique, right? That's why you can up two of the exact same model and they can feel completely different. Unlike an iPhone, for example, guitars aren't completely machine built. Even in this era of modern manufacturing, there's still so much human labor that goes into building a guitar. And of course, what tuning you use, what string gauge is on the guitar is gonna have an effect on the playability too. So working on those concepts, the German made Pleck machine, of course it's German, analyzes your guitar, scans the frets, figures out how close they are to optimum for your desired setup. Again, specifically to your guitar. And then it will use a special blade to cut and crown each fret individually to an outrageous degree of accuracy. And from there, Sweetwater hand polishes each fret. And when they revealed my Eclipse after the plucking process, my mind was blown. It was almost exactly as I remembered unboxing it in 2010. You know, it still wore the wear with pride, but everything was so clean, it was set up perfectly. And by the way, the way that Sweetwater and other repair shops uses the Pleck is different to how, uh, like, Gibson, for example, uses it. Gibson, as the builder, has preset optimums. So they stick the Les Paul template, for example, into the machine, and it just does its thing on all the Les Pauls. They don't individually scan each guitar, which takes more time and obviously doesn't make a ton of sense in an assembly line factory process. And then it was really cool to see the rest of the workshop and distribution center when I was out there. Like if Sweetwater says something is out of stock, I'm not sure I believe them. This is an insane amount of guitars and there's so many passionate people out there. Like it was sick to see the guitar gallery team in action too. So anyways, it's a couple weeks later, I'm back at home after Sweetwater and a quick vacation and these boxes have arrived. To be honest, I'm not really sure why there's two, but let's go ahead and pick this one to open up. It's back, it's beautiful, I missed this guitar. Look at those frets too, that is immaculate. Oh, they also raised the bridge as well. That's important, better string angle, and also tunematics under too much stress. They've been known to cave in over time, <laughs> don't we all? So you actually wanna raise your tailpiece to reduce the tension. Here's the report, you can see it gets down to point 
one sixty-fourth of an inch. That's an insane degree of accuracy. And look at that, they changed the neck relief by point zero zero one inches on the base side one it's ridiculous that it's that detailed and two that just goes to show how fucking solid esp guitars are okay so what did they do in addition to the fretwork replaced neck volume pot cleaned all the controls installed a battery clip in the control cavity oh okay here's the clip that tom installed that was really nice it's super simple the battery just pops in like that i don't know if modern day e2s come with dedicated battery compartments but the esp standards never did basically the factory just included these two pieces of foam and stuck the battery in between them that was the solution to keep it from rattling around it works but a clip is definitely nicer replace the battery set it up with 942 and drop d tuning per request i'd recommend switching to higher tension string gauge for drop tunings in general for better intonation stability and sustain listen tom i love you man but that's not happening i'm so happy to have this back let's go ahead plug it in <laughs> Oh, it's so good. So right now I'm running this through the Angle Savage just because well, I don't really know. I just like the tones. I was a bit concerned because part of the reason that I fell in love with ESP guitars is because they have absolutely mammoth sized frets. And since I'd worn the frets down, I wasn't sure if that was the better option to pleck or to just do a straight refret. And you can definitely tell there is a difference between this and a new E2 if you were to just pluck one off the factory line. <laughs> But it's back to just being effortless to play, man. <laughs> it's pretty funny when i got this i was kind of amazed at how much easier it was to play my favorite lamb of god riffs on this as opposed to like on my epiphone <laughs> Like, I'm not saying that a better guitar will make you a better player. That's on you to practice. But there are definitely easier guitars to play than others, and this is one of those that just will not fight you. It's one of those day one homie guitars that, you know, will try its absolute best to make you look decent. I love this guitar, man. This is a special one, because it feels like I've gotten a new guitar, but it's still got all the sentimental value attached. It's awesome. Pluck machines are really expensive, so it's great. You can send your guitar to Sweetwater to have it done. Or if you buy a guitar from them, they can do it for you before it even gets to you. This is really cool, but let's see what else is in the garage. Next box. Huh, so if that one was the guitar, what's inside this one? Don't know. Let's open it up, see what's inside. Okay, so here's the original case. You can see they really haven't changed too much since 2010. Obviously, this one is a lot more scuffed up. Or like here. Honestly, it's not too bad though, considering what it's been through. But the lock broke off in shipping, and Sweetwater said that it, they just couldn't repair it. So they just replaced the entire case. And, I mean, what can you say about Sweetwater's customer service, dude? Accidents and shipping happen all the time. That wasn't even their fault. And they included candy. Oh yeah, and the strap I used with it. I've had this strap since middle school. Look how fucking edgy it is, man. It's got skulls and tribal designs. So huge thanks to Wade and to Tom and to Josh and to the rest of the Sweetwater team for setting this whole thing up and showing us what Plekin is all about. It's like an enhanced playability mod for your guitar. It's absolutely nuts. It's like 13 years later, I'm picking this guitar up for the very first time and having my mind blown all over again. Just super cool to re-unlock the potential of a guitar that holds so much sentimental value. Anyways, that's about all I have for you guys today. Social media, merch, and affiliate links that support the channel are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I will see you.
the next video.